Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome to The Hive. In this video, we're taking a look at turning Home Assistant into a burglar alarm. Now we have done this before, but it was pretty early on in my YouTube career and I've learned a lot in that time. So planning to do a couple of things a little bit better this time around. Firstly, we're going to go through planning out our setup. We're going to set up the basic alarm system in Home Assistant. We'll set up some automations to trigger when the alarm goes off. And we'll also set up a couple of automations to both arm and disarm the alarm at appropriate times. We're also going to be setting up some notifications with some slightly advanced templating so that we can get rich data in our notifications. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe? And if you hit the bell icon, you'll get a notification when I release new videos each week. While you're at it, if you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, there's some affiliate links to smart home gadgets that you can buy for your own smart home and support the channel at the same time without costing you any extra, or you can support the channel directly through my Buy Me A Coffee link. Of course, those affiliate links and my Buy Me A Coffee link can all be found on my website, hivemindautomation.com.au. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you might recall that around two months ago, I lost my entire Home Assistant configuration when the SD card in my Raspberry Pi failed. Since I migrated to the Home Assistant Yellow, I've been without an alarm system and, to be honest, quite anxious about that fact. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, we've looked at setting up a burglar alarm in Home Assistant before, but that was nearly three years ago now. Things in Home Assistant and changed, and as I said at the top, I've learned some things along the way since then too. Now, to get the best out of our home alarm, we're going to need some sensors. Now, your use case will undoubtedly differ from mine. That said, contact sensors and motion sensors are pretty much the standard in any home alarm system. It's great to be able to give some of our sensors double duty just beyond uh, the burglar alarm by using the motion sensors to turn lights on and off. Um, and also we use the contact sensors uh, to uh, turn some lights on and uh, off in uh, our use case here as well, specifically uh, in the garage. That said, in our case, the motion and contact sensors for the home alarm did come first and the automated lighting did come later. But that's not important. What is important is being able to make sure that our home, our belongings, and most importantly, our cat are all safe when we're not at home and even when we are asleep. So the basic concept here is that we've already got plenty of sensors about open and closed doors and windows, and then also about motion inside the house. So all we're really then missing is having some different automations that let us know if any of those sensor values aren't what they should be when we're either away or asleep. Now, before we get stuck into creating the alarm panel in Home Assistant, I personally think that it is very important that we actually start by making a plan. Now, there's a few steps to planning, and that first step is firstly deciding what alarm modes that we're going to make use of. There are four armed alarm modes in the Home Assistant alarm panel integration. There's armed home, armed away, armed night, and armed vacation. I will mention also that there is this custom bypass uh, sec setup that I'm not too familiar with. So I'm just gonna leave the custom bypass alone for now. We might have to come back to that in a separate video. Now at our home, we tend to only use the armed home and armed away modes, uh, and we use the armed home as our night mode. That said, I feel like the main differences are really going to be that in armed away, any sensor that triggers needs to then trigger the alarm. Whereas in home or night mode, we can safely ignore motion sensors inside the house, especially in, say, uh, bedrooms and bathrooms. I feel like vacation mode might be good for maybe setting up some 
uh, automations to happen uh, while you are away on vacation, uh, such as maybe disarming the alarm when you have uh, your friend or family member come over to look after the cat or uh, water the plants or those kinds of things, but also perhaps to maybe make some changes to the way some of your lighting automations work. Um, but uh, I digress, we'll look at that in a separate video, I think. For step two of planning, we need to figure out which sensors that we want to monitor. Now, I'm going to be focusing, as I said, on motion and contact sensors, but it's also possible to include other things such as illuminance sensors to maybe detect light levels where there's no lights turned on. So perhaps that means someone's wandering around the inside of your house with a torch. Or in cases where you have cameras, depending on the camera system that you're using, you may be able to do things like AI person or object detection on camera feeds. Uh, and I'm planning a separate video on that very subject a little bit later. So for me, my list of sensors right now looks like this. This is just an Excel spreadsheet that I have put together with the room that I've got the sensors in, the friendly name, what kind of sensor it is, uh, and then the entity ID of those sensors. Now in regard to motion sensors especially, it's worth mentioning that these PIR type sensors like this Akara motion sensor are not particularly great at rejecting the detection of motion from pets, like cheeky cats that perhaps jump up on a bench and a table, etc. So I may need to look at changing at least some of these sensors for either the Akara FP1s that I've reviewed previously or the very well-reviewed Akara FP2. I am planning a visit to a subscriber's home in the not too distant future to check out the Akari FP2. So uh, make sure you're subscribed and keep your eyes peeled for that one. I'm also planning some additional work on using some micro presence, like room level presence detection using ES presence. So that's another one to look out for coming soon as well. Now for planning step number three, it's important for us to then also decide on presence entities that we want to track in order to enable and disable the, the alarm. The reason I say that is that you might want to provide access to people who don't necessarily live in your home so that they can come and look after your pets when you're away or your indoor plants, etc. And uh, as I mentioned before, that might be where the armed vacation mode might come in handy. So with our planning more or less sorted out, it's time to get into setting up the alarm system. And there's a couple of different steps for setting up the alarm system. For step one, we're just going to set up the alarm panel entity itself. Now I'm going to be working inside my production instance of Home Assistant here because that's where all of my sensors are. So to get set up, we're going to need to modify our configuration.yaml file. If you haven't got the Studio Code Server add-on installed, I highly recommend that you get that installed because it's going to be really helpful for modifying your configuration.yaml file. So we are over here on my production instance and I'm gonna pop open to Studio Code Server. And once that loads, we've got our configuration file up there. Now I'm going to just uh, collapse some of these things here. And right down the bottom here, I'll create a new line so that we can see everything in here. Might make this a bit bigger so that you can see it better. And I'm just going to grab, I've got uh, over on my other screen, I have uh, some code examples. I'm just going to paste in this new section here. We've got alarm control panel, and we're using a platform of manual. We're giving it a name uh, and I'm just going to change that to the Hive Alarm. We have a code of one, two, three, four at the moment. We can change that to something else. So for example, I can go uh, bang secret and I happen to have a secret set up for the alarm code. Now I'll just go, uh, so if I put in secret here and then alarm underscore code, that should now uh, use my secrets file. Uh, to look at the alarm code there for me. So we've got arming time here. This means that any time we arm the system, there is going to be an arming delay of 30 seconds. We've got a delay time here of 20, and that is uh, how long after any of the sensors triggers, 
uh, before the alarm goes into uh, triggered mode. So it gives you a little bit of time uh, once you trigger the alarm system uh, before it will then uh, start making noise or pushing alerts, etc. You can set either of these arming times or the delay times uh, to whatever you want. We have a trigger time value here and it will continue to be in that triggered state for that amount of time. By default with this configuration, after that four seconds, the alarm will go back into the state that it was in prior to being triggered. There is a key to change that if you like. So you could put in this arm after trigger and you could then set that to true. By default, this is false, um, but if you were to set this to true, um, then after that four seconds, it then will go into a disarmed state. I'm not going to do that though. So it's worth mentioning the default if you don't set this trigger time will be 120 seconds. The default for arming time, if you don't set this will be 60 seconds. And the default for delay time will be 60 seconds if you don't set those uh, variables. I'm going to remove the trigger time here um, just so that we have that 120 seconds of uh, triggered state. So we've then got these uh, disarmed and armed home and I might also add an armed until night and we're arming time zero and uh, delay time zero. So what that's going to do is these are custom overrides for any time that we are in one of these states. So disarmed, armed home or armed night that's going to override these default arming time and delay time settings so that we can uh, then get slightly different behavior for when we're arming home or arming night. There's one other variable that I want to add into the system here, and I want to put in code underscore arm underscore required, and I want to set this to false. This is just going to mean that I don't need to enter the alarm code to um, the system. So I think that's pretty much everything that we want in the uh, configuration.yaml file. I'll just uh, remove the comment here for the example configuration.yaml entry. My original example was taken directly from the Home Assistant documentation for the manual alarm panel. So you can find that there uh, and um, follow along at home if you would like. So with that configuration set up, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we can over here go to, uh, we'll go to developer tools and we'll check the configuration. Uh, will not prevent Home Assistant from starting and I'll tap restart here. This is just going to restart Home Assistant and it will make sure that our alarm control panel is then set up. When we get back, we'll very quickly add it to a dashboard. Uh, and then once it is uh, on the dashboard, we'll get on to setting up some automations. Okay, so Home Assistant just finished uh, starting back up. Uh, now I've got this um, main dashboard over here that I've created and I've created this uh, security uh, dashboard on that main dashboard as well. So I've got a separate security section there. Uh, and I'm going to click on the three dot stack at the top and then edit dashboard and I'm going to add a card and I'm going to select an alarm panel and I'm going to select the hive alarm there. We're going to add arm um, home, arm um, away and we'll add arm um, night as well so that we have those uh, three options there and I'm going to hit save. I'm also going to uh, add another card and I'm going to add a, a vertical stack and inside that vertical stack, I'm going to add some horizontal stacks. Uh, and inside here, I'm just going to add, so inside the vertical stack, I've got three horizontal stacks and inside there, I'm just going to add some conditional cards. Uh, and the reason we're going to do conditional cards is because I only want them to display under certain conditions, uh, specifically when those uh, things are in a state of on. So uh, I'm going to add a condition and uh, entity state. I'm going to grab master bedroom motion. Uh, and I specifically want the uh, master bedroom motion motion sensor there. If that is in a detected state, then I want an entity card and I want that entity. So master bedroom motion motion. So with this conditional card, if the master bedroom motion motion is in a state of detected, it's going to display the card for that. Now I'm just going to grab the code editor here uh, and I'm going to uh, do a bunch more of those by pretty much copying and pasting 
uh, that there. I'm just gonna go through here uh, and uh, when we're done, I'll, I'll show you the results, so. Okay, so what I've set up here is uh, it looks fairly complicated because it's 130 odd lines of YAML. Um, but essentially what this is, is it's a vertical stack full of horizontal stacks. So we've got one, two, three, four, five horizontal stacks inside here of conditional cards. But uh, because they are conditional, if I hit save, so we can see all of them there, but if I now hit done, we only get uh, the ones showing up here that are in a triggered state. So the master bedroom motion is detected at the moment. Uh, and if I were to move around, we would see uh, others get detected. So I might just move into the kitchen uh, and we should see now that the kitchen motion has been detected. And we also got lounge motion detected there. I'll go open a door and you see we've got uh, the garage internal door is open as well there. We basically now got something that uh, is akin to any kind of uh, home alarm system where uh, we have our panel uh, to arm the system. We have a display of the different entities that are triggered so that we can kind of know more or less what state our home alarm system is in. Now with this alarm panel set up, I mean, we've got um, home and it's armed home and I can uh, put in my code here uh, and disarm it, uh, or we can arm it away, uh, and it's going to go through that 30 seconds to arm the system, uh, and I can, again, put in my code here and then disarm the system. So while we can arm and disarm the alarm system, nothing's actually going to happen until we set up a series of automations. Automations are really the core of this system, so without them, we're not actually going to get any useful data out of this thing there's a number of automations that we're going to need. We'll firstly need different automations to trigger the alarm system depending on the state that it's in. We'll also need automations to send notifications when things happen on the alarm. And it might also be nice to have our smart home react when the alarm goes off, so flashing lights, etc. The first thing that I'm going to do is set up an automation to trigger the alarm if any of the motion sensors or contact sensors enter a state of on, but obviously only if the alarm system is currently in a state of armed away, or in this case, I'm also going to add armed vacation. So to demonstrate that, and I'm going to do this all through the UI, uh, we'll go over to our settings, automations and scenes, and I'm going to create a new automation and we'll add a trigger and we're going to have the trigger be entity state and we're now going to just enter in all of the different entities uh, that can trigger the alarm so we'll start with master bedroom motion and motion so ma master bedroom motion motion we'll go on suite motion motion and we're just going to go through and we're listing all of these entities so we can do this all through the ui so water closet motion the water closet motion motion or if i click on the three dot stack here i can go edit in yaml and now in edit in yaml i can just start going binary uh, and i'm just going to copy that section there and then uh, i'm going to go garage motion binary sensor dot office motion binary sensor dot and we'll just keep going through this. I'll, I'll speed this bit up. So we've got all of our motion sensors in here, but I also want to add my contact sensors in here as well. So I'm going to uh, keep going with these. 
But there we have, we've got our six reed sensors, the front, back, laundry, external garage, internal garage, and the garage door. And then all of our motion sensors listed in the entity IDs here. Uh, if I now go back to the visual editor, so now we've got all of those listed there. Uh, and if we go to detected, so we want to figure out when any of those are in a state of detected, we want to make sure that um, we're triggering. Now we need to also add some conditions here. Now, the conditions I'm going to put in here, I'm going to put in an or condition. So it's going to test if any of these conditions match inside this or condition. And specifically, I'm going to look at two state conditions. So the first state condition I'm going to go for is the hive alarm. If it is in a state of armed away, and then also the hive alarm, if it is in a state of armed vacation, any of those uh, sensors trigger while we're in either armed away or armed vacation. So I'll just collapse those. We're going to now add an action, calling a service, and we're going to go for alarm. And we're going to find the alarm control panel trigger. We're choosing our target, which is the hive alarm. And we can save that automation. Alarm, trigger, arms away, vacation. Okay, so that's the automation to trigger when we're armed away, but what about when we're at home? So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm just going to expand out the sensors. And pretty much what I'm going to do is remove the motion sensor. Any one of those motion sensors could reasonably be triggered while we have the alarm system in a state of armed home or armed night. Um, so I've just removed those. I'll change these conditions to uh, if we are armed home or armed night and then i will save that as alarm trigger alarm night slash home. and we've saved that so if i go back out to settings automations we've now got our uh, trigger alarm night and trigger alarm away or vacation so those are ready to go i'm going to set up another automation to send me an alert whenever the alarm is armed so i'm going to create an automation new automation, and the trigger is going to be over the state of the hive alarm. So let's go from any time the hive alarm changes from arming to something else, I want to get an alert. I'm going to add an action, call a service, and I'm going to call the notify mobile app, and I'm going to choose iPhone app, and Title's just going to be alarm for now, and we might actually change that in a moment. And we'll go the alarm was, uh, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change this and add in some templating. I'm going to, in this template, add in dates and inside here, we want the state of alarm underscore control underscore panel dot the hive alarm at and then I'm going to put in here inside a template uh, and we're going to go states again, sensor.time date. So basically what this should be is the alarm was um, and then the state um, that the alarm has been moved into and I need to close the curly braces there and the time and date that that was changed to. I'm also going to grab this template here and add that to the title. Okay, so now if I save that, uh, and we'll call that alarm, alarm notification, uh, and I'll just tap save on that now. So what we've got is an automation when the state changes from arming to something else, it will send me an alert. So if I run this automation now, I should get an alert. The alarm was disarmed at and the time and that is looking at that disarmed came from the states um, of the panel. So if I go back to our main and then our uh, security alarm here, if I'm just going to disarm that, 
So now if I go arm home, we should get a slight problem in my logic here because um, I've got when the hive alarm changes from arming, um, what I might just do is remove the from and the to because if we leave those any time the alarm changes, we're then going to actually get an alert. So um, whether it's triggered or pending or those kinds of things. So if I now go back to main and then back to the hive alarm and then go to arm home, the alarm was armed home at 108. And then if I enter my uh, pin code uh, and then disarm, the alarm was disarmed. If I go arm night, the alarm was armed night at this time. Uh, and then again, enter my code, disarm, disarmed at. And we can go armed away with the alarm was arming at. We got the alert that it was arming. And then it's going to change from arming to armed away in a moment. And we'll get an alert for that as well. Obviously, we can make these critical alerts. Maybe for these uh, kinds of things, I probably wouldn't make them a critical alert. Uh, but certainly for uh, notifications that we get into a bit later, I 100% will be making them critical alerts. So now we've got armed away and we've got the timestamp uh, and the alert there on our iPhone. Uh, so I'll just disarm that. Now, obviously, you can choose your own adventure with how you want to set up your automation. I just like to have that notification when we uh, change the state of the alarm. I might just change that name, though, to uh, state change notification. We'll rename that now. Uh, and we've got that sorted. So we've got three automations and we could maybe consider that done, uh, but I wanna add a couple more automations to then handle what happens when the state of the alarm changes to triggered. Basically, I want something that's going to make some noise, flash some lights and send me a critical push notification to say what's going on. Before I get into that though, I'm gonna set up a couple of text input helpers uh, and we'll see why in a moment so on back on home assistant i'm going to go to settings devices and services and helpers and i'm going to create a helper and i want a text helper here and i'm going to call this one alarm trigger i'm just going to change that icon to alarm and i'll just go uh we'll make grab that alarm bell and we'll create that and i'm going to create a second one and second text, alarm is on trigger. And uh, person, let's go that one there and we'll create that. So we've now got these two input text fields. So alarm trigger and alarm disarm trigger. What I'm gonna do here is go back into our automations and scenes and I want to modify the trigger automation. So if I go into a trigger alarm night, I'm gonna add an action in here, call a service, and the service I want to call is input underscore text, and we're going to set the value of input text, and I'm going to set alarm trigger, and the value is going to be a template. So for that template, I want state underscore ATTR, and then inside brackets, I'm going to put in trigger dot entity underscore ID and then comma and then inside single quotes, friendly underscore name. So something I've learned is that anytime an automation is triggered by another entity, so uh, any of these entities that we have here, there is a trigger entity ID that is created by that automation. And if we then look for inside a template for the state attribute of that trigger entity ID and try and pull out the friendly name attribute, I'm setting that friendly name attribute into an input text field. Uh, I'm actually going to copy that YAML there and I'm gonna save this automation. Uh, what that's gonna do, if I go back over here and I go to I'm away, and we got our alert that the alarm was arming. And that also comes up on my watch too, which is nice. Uh, while we're waiting for that though, I'm gonna edit my dashboard. I'm gonna add a card and I'm going to grab entities and entities I'm adding here, uh, input underscore text alarm trigger and input underscore text alarm trigger. 
So now we've got our alarm trigger and our disarm trigger, and those are currently unknown. We've got armed away there. So if I get up and now move, we should be able to set off uh, the alarm, and you see that our alarm trigger has populated into kitchen motion motion, because that's the uh, motion sensor that detected me. So I'm just going to uh, change this to, yeah, so now we've got that triggered. We got an alert on our phone that the alarm was triggered as well. Uh, so I'm just going to disarm the alarm, stop that from happening now. Okay, so we've now got this, uh, this input text field for the alarm trigger. Now what I'm going to do is go back to our settings and our automations, and we're going to finally set up the proper alarm trigger. So I'll create a new automation and I'll add a trigger for when the state of the alarm, if that goes into triggered, there we are. so we've got triggered. So when the hive alarm changes to triggered, I'll collapse that. I'm not gonna worry about any conditions here, uh, but we could maybe add a condition that if someone is not at home, so if no, then uh, we would maybe add that condition in here. Uh, but I'm going to add an action. So I'm going to call a service. So I'm going to call set volume. Uh, so media player volume set. And uh, for now, I'm just going to use my echo show eight, which is the one closest here. It's just in the kitchen. Uh, and we're going to set the volume to one, which is 100%. Uh, I'll just save that for now. And we'll just call this alarm, alarm. So we're setting our volume on the Echo Show 8 to 100%. I'll add another action. And in here, I'm going to run in parallel a couple of different actions. First action that I'm going to do is call a service and I'm going to go notify mobile, notify to my phone and uh, title alarm. I'll go to data and I'm going to paste in uh, this section here. So we just got push sound. Uh, the name of the sound is default. It is a critical alert, and we're doing that at, at full volume there. Uh, and our message is where this is going to get a little bit interesting. So we're going to put in here the alarm was set off at and we will put in here states, and we're going to put in our sensor dot date time. Close those brackets, and then by, and then we're going to grab states and inside our brackets, we've got single quotes and we want uh, input underscore text dot alarm trigger. So the alarm was set off at date and time by the entity that triggered that. So that's why we wanted to create that input text. So I will save that. So we're sending a push notification to our phone with a critical tag on it. I'm also going to call a service. I'm going to call Alexa Media, and uh, we'll grab that. And inside here, uh, we will go title will be alarm. And uh, our target, I'm just going to put, for now, I'm just going to put media on the dot echo show eight. The message, I'm going to do some more templating in here, make it a little bit easier to work with. So um, with templating, uh, we can actually use the curly brace and then a percent sign. And then I can write for I in range uh, and then 1000. And then I'm going to put in intruder alert. And then uh, so again, the curly braces and the percent signs end four. Um, so that is essentially going to create a for loop where a thousand times it's going to say intruder alert. If we wanted to, we could also uh, use our templating in the title and put in uh, the states and then uh, our input underscore text dot alarm trigger in there. Uh, and if I save that now, uh, so now we've got notification to the phone, we're going to make uh, the Amazon Echo shout. And I'm going to do a couple more things here as well. So I'm going to call uh, LifeX Pulse, uh, LifeX.Effect. 
effect uh, underscore pulse. So we're going to call a lifex pulse effect. I'm going to choose my entities. I'm going to call whole eight one and whole eight three. Uh, I want them to uh, be in a breathe mode and the brightness percent will be 100. The color name is going to be red and uh, it's going to run for, we'll run that for 60 seconds, a number of cycles there. Um, powered on lights are temporarily turned on during the effect. I will save that there and I'm going to do the same thing again, calling the service, the service lifex dot effect underscore pulse. And uh, instead of hallway one and three, I'm going to do hallway two and four. And, and the color name for this one is going to be blue. And I'll hit save there. Uh, and we've got one last action that I'm going to, to set here. I'll call a service and the service is going to be and uh, we're going to choose our device echo show eight and i'm going to set that back to 0.5 about 50 percent and i'll click save on that so this automation when the alarm changes to triggered we're setting the volume on our echo show eight to 100 percent we're sending a critical notification to my phone we're making the amazon echo show eight say intruder alert a thousand times we're also pulsing the hallway one and hallway three down lights in red and the hallway two and hallway four lights in blue now you can add as many other effects as you want you can make uh you can make leds change color flash different lights those kinds of things essentially to do whatever you can to kind of indicate that your uh, alarm has been triggered. If you had, say, a Zigbee siren uh, that you could trigger, you could also uh, kick that off here as well. I'll be looking into a Zigbee siren in a future video. Uh, now, the other thing to mention here is that these four actions, the sending the notifications, the making the Alexa media notification run, and the uh, pulse effects for the light, hallway lights, they're all supposed to happen in parallel. So they should all trigger at the same time. So what I'm gonna do uh, just to kind of demonstrate this is I'm going to now go to our uh, main here and go back to our security alarm. And we've got uh, motion detected in the ensuite. I'm going to click on arm away. And we're basically now just waiting for the um, arming to complete. Okay, so we now have armed away. We got the alert on our phone that we're armed away. And now uh, basically we just need to set off the alarm. So we just got that master bedroom motion was detected, kitchen motion was detected. So we're in a pending state now. The alarm is about to go off. We've got 20 seconds of delay before um, we go from this pending state into our triggered state. So now we're in triggered state. We got the alarm. Sorry, I'm having trouble with accessing your sign and says face skill right now. So we got the alarm was set off um, by the master bedroom motion motion. Um, so we've got all of the details here about um, what's happened. For whatever reason, the Amazon Echo didn't uh, do what I had anticipated. Um, the lights in the hallway are set to the right colors, uh, but they're not pulsing. The last thing I want to set up is an automation to disarm the alarm when I get home, if it's in an armed state. So uh, again, we'll go back to automations and scenes. We'll create an automation, a new automation, and our trigger is going to be state. Uh, and we're going to go person.stuart from whatever to home. Doesn't matter where we come from. We just want to uh, make sure that we are going into a state of home. In the conditions here, I'm going to add a condition and I'm going to make sure that we've got an or condition here. And we're going to set up a number of state conditions here. Uh, if the hive alarm is armed away. So when I get home, if it's armed in any way, we then need to add an action and we're going to call a service. The service is going to be alarm disarm. 
we're going to choose the entity the hive alarm and we're going to in this case we're going to need to put the code to disarm the alarm because we have configured that i'm not going to show you that on screen here because that would not be ideal we're calling the service disarm on the hive alarm and i'm also going to call another server we're going to go input underscore text and we're setting our value our target is going to be our alarm disarm trigger the value we're going to set that to is a uh, state underscore attr uh, and then inside here again we're going to go trigger dot entity underscore id comma and then in, inside single quotes friendly underscore name uh, and then we'll save that so it wouldn't matter how many people we added here or how many triggers we added here we then understand what the trigger was for that so i'm going to save that i'm going to go alarm presence disarm, and we'll save that because we've done that we then just need uh, one more automation uh, so we're going to uh, add the trigger is going to be the state uh, and then the state is going to be uh, alarm going to go to disarmed and the actions are going to be call service so we're again we're sending a notification to my iphone we're going uh, alarm disarmed in our message the alarm was disarmed by and in our template here states and open brackets and we're going to go for inside single quotes input underscore text dot alarm disarm trigger so the alarm was disarmed by uh, that happening remembering that that's going to be the person who has just arrived home so uh, we'll add in arriving home at the end of that message i'll tap save on that we'll go alarm notification, and i'll tap save i'm going to add one more action in here and it's going to be call service and it's going to be uh, input underscore text set value we're setting our value for i'm going to choose both of those text fields and i'm going to leave the value blank uh, so i'm going to save that so basically what this is going to do when we send that notification when the whenever the alarm changes to disarmed it's going to clear out these fields um, and that's simply because uh, if we leave them there you'll see that master bedroom motion motion is uh, there still if i don't clear them out uh, we may get some erroneous data later on when we are sending these notifications. Uh, so we've got our presence disarm notification. What I'm going to do just for uh, illustration purposes, I'm going to put in my name there. So alarm disarm trigger is Stuart. And I'm going to go back over to our settings, automations and scenes, and we'll go our presence disarm notification. And I'm going to run that. We'll get the alarm was disarmed by Stuart arriving home on our iPhone here. And if I go back to our main panel here and then into our security alarm, we've still got those there. So I might need to actually set something in uh, those. Set that to unknown. Save that. And I'll just run that again. So if I go back to main and then to our alarm, yeah, so those are now both set to unknown, um, which means that um, that clears them out. So that is turning Home Assistant into a burglar alarm. As always, let me know in the comments section how you use your Home Assistant setup as a security alarm system. I like the fact that we're now getting double duty out of our sensors by not only using them to turn lights on and off, but we're also now able to use them to trigger the alarm and alert us if there's something wrong. There's plenty more that we could do here. For example, adding a Zigbee siren to make more noise outside. We could maybe also add things like smart smoke detectors or carbon monoxide sensors and trigger automations based on the output of those. And we could even add smart locks to the doors to do things like lock the doors automatically when the alarm is armed or disarm the alarm when the door is unlocked with a key. By having our smart home handle the alarm functions, especially alerting us when there's something wrong, we don't have to pay a subscription to an alarm monitoring company, but we're getting the timely push notifications to our phone 
and we can then make decisions about whether or not we need to call triple O. For viewers outside of Australia, that's the Australian equivalent of 999, 911 or 112. In a future video, I'm going to explore taking a look at actionable notifications so that we can push an alert to our Home Assistant app and choose on that alert whether or not we want to sound the alarm or just ignore the trigger. And that'll be good for situations where I forget to disarm the alarm before I open a door or if for whatever reason the presence detection doesn't disarm the alarm properly. I will say one thing that I think would be a lot better for our setup is if I were using the Akara FP1s or maybe even an Akara FP2 um, to do the presence detection, specifically human presence detection, uh, because as I mentioned before, the cheeky cat does have a tendency to jump up onto benches when we are not home and she does trigger the alarm when she does that. Let me know what you think in the comments. That's all we have for this video and I hope that it helped you in your home automation journey. Be sure to drop a comment down below with home automation ideas that you'd like to see covered in a future video. And don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Instagram and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, now's a great time to think about changing that. While you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll get a notification when I release new videos, which is normally each week. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to support the channel, there's a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Any contribution you make through buy me a coffee does get to put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Don't forget to check out my website, hivemindautomation.com.au. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.